Shelley, I think I'd like to start with you and ask you, what does family mean to you? Well, family actually means everything to me, which is obviously, I guess, why I do what I do. Because, um, I mean, I could talk for hours about what family means to me. Um, because when I was young, I never wanted a career. All I wanted was children. And all I wanted was two children. And I got my two children. And James was, we were told, well, first of all, we were told we would never have children. And um, we had a one in a million chance of having children. And so when James came along, it was like an absolute miracle to me. And I was really, now I'm tearing. <laughs> I'll get you later. And, um, and, and I was like on a, an eight-month high because just the think that I was going to have this baby. And, and it's interesting because just getting off the track a little, when parents have their children come out, we all look for reasons, which is silly, but we do. And I actually thought, maybe I have a gay child because I wanted him too much. And then I thought, that's got to be absurd. How could you want a child too much? And, but this love for my children, and I do the same for my other son as well if the need arose, is because as a parent, I think you should do the absolute best for your children. And, and that's what I do. I love him, and when he, he came out... Uh, I realised that um, to have a gay child was not the problem, but the problem was for him when he came out in 95 that the only right he had in Queensland was to be gay. And I thought, I'm sorry, that is not good enough for my one in a million baby. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so what I did, because also to... When he came out, I mean, I already guessed that he was gay before he did. So that was not a huge issue, but what... What concerned me was uh, what would happen to him. I had huge fears because I imagined, because I knew nothing about the gay community and I was like everybody else just always expected the worst. And it was also in the time when AIDS, not HIV, was around and I just automatically assumed that James would get AIDS and there would be some predator and all the dreadful stuff. So I can understand parents when they go through those fears. But... What I did, instead of just living with the fears, I thought, no, no, I want to understand his life, I want to be part of his life, and for me to do that, I had to get into the gay community. And so I could tell stories about me getting into the... Uh, what I did was I went to work as a volunteer at the AIDS Council and in Brisbane, and they didn't want me because the, they thought that I looked like I wouldn't fit in. But... <laughs> But as it's turned out, I've outlasted four general managers. <laughs> yeah, don't judge a book by its cover, huh? <laughs> and, and, and so what it did for me was it got me in and I learnt. I learnt... I, and, uh, yeah, there's so many stories. Anyway, <laughs> and so I, I learnt all about it so I could be part of his life and there was no fear for me. And, and what I have done over these years, when we get back to the, the topic of family is I have an extremely small family as far as blood relatives go, and to be quite honest, I don't particularly like them. But, <laughs> but, what, but what I do have is an extremely large extended family that I love dealing. And, and I seem to accumulate... Tell me if I talk for no, too you, long. You, I, no, and, don't worry, I'll, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll watch And I seem to accumulate... Yeah. Young people, as I go along, I have what I call my straight son's leftover. Some of his girlfriends. I have one that I call my daughter. And, and, I've, and like she hasn't been with my straight son for 10 years, but she's still in my family, mm. and I treat her like a daughter. And the same with James's friends. James doesn't live in Brisbane, but regularly I have a group of his friends come around for dinner, and I consider... Th and we talk about you, James. <laughs> and, and, and I consider them my family. And James had a partner for 10 years. Now, he hasn't been with him for quite a few years now, but I still call him my third son, and he comes home mm. to me when he needs help. Now, James has another, another lovely new partner, and I tell James that, you know, if they break up, Tom stays with the family, and James... <laughs> <laughs> And, and James needs good reasons as to why they broke up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've heard that. I've heard that from my mother-in-law too, yeah. actually. And, yeah. and so... 
that to me is family. And for me, for my family, I would walk over hot coals. And mm. I feel that sometimes that's what I do when I go and I constantly talking to MPs and I feel like for the last couple of years I've lived out of a suitcase because I'm just either in Canberra or I'm somewhere just lobbying, geeing up people to have more confidence to go and talk to their MPs and, and I do this because I love my son. And I think I don't, I shouldn't be rewarded or whatever for that because to me that's what a mother does. Yeah. And that's why I do it. Mm. Bravo. 